So my journey started with the stick. Yeah. That was, that, was, that was really embarrassing, but I guess it was a cool moment to get. And also, so this isn't my real bedroom, uh, because my actual bedroom was taken over by a bunch of workmen at the time, so I did a lot of this project in the guest bedroom up there. First, I needed a nice clear workspace and something that was sort of aesthetically pleasing, and the bed pretty much makes up like the entire floor space. So that's the only thing I had to use, and here's all the stuff that um, I used, except that's totally not all the stuff that I used, because, uh, yeah, you'll see. Um, but I first started with a mock-up. I really wanted to make kind of a triangular-shaped hammer, because I hadn't really seen one of those. Um, but actually, this drawing isn't super great. Uh, my brother actually made a better one, which you'll see later, which I kind of went off of. So after you have the mock-up, sorry, my roommate's coming in if you can hear her. Um, so after I made the mock-up, then I had to make a pattern mock-up. And so I started just tracing kind of that um, bendy shape that I had drawn, trying to make it into a 3D pattern. And so, uh, and you can also see here to make sure that you trace all of your pattern pieces on top of each other or use them as a fan, you know, that's also an option. Uh, but in order to make your fan symmetrical, you have to trace all of your pattern pieces against each other instead of trying to like draw separate pieces because that would that would be like terrible and also you don't want to draw both sides of the piece um you only want to draw half so that both sides will be symmetrical not only each piece will be the same but each side of each piece will be the same um, but i didn't really like how those piece, pieces looked so as you saw i cut off a end because i thought they were, it was too long and skinny which actually i regretted later but oh well um so it looked kind of long and skinny, but I wanted it to be also be bigger. So this is the one that I made bigger and I really liked the shape of this one. However, it, it just wasn't big enough and I knew I was gonna need like a ton more stuff. So I got a ton more stuff, uh, but that's still not everything that I used because, well, you'll see later. <laughs> um, and so I, uh, yeah, proceeded to make an even bigger pattern piece. Oh boy. Oh, and to very technically uh, make sure that the piece was the same shape, I used a little piece of paper to uh, mark exactly the same distance away from the side so that it was exactly the same size, just just bigger, if, if that makes like any sense whatsoever. <laughs> And so I really didn't want to cut out like a whole separate like, six pieces of, um, I think it was six, yeah, six pieces of paper. So I just cut it with an exacto knife, all six at the same time. And I have a cat, and cats make everything better. Her name is Sophie, by the way, if you wanted to know, which I'm sure you do, um, you probably care more about the cat than me at this point, but that, that's okay. That's, that's entirely understandable. But anyway, so I finished the pattern, and as you can see, it's way bigger, so it was like as big as my head, so like, I knew it was getting somewhere. So uh, then I had to cut out half, and again, only half of one of the pieces, so that I could flip it over and trace it to make sure that all of my pieces were exactly symmetrical. So as you can see here, you, you can probably see what I'm saying, but better here. So I traced half of it and then I flipped it over and traced the other half. So this way they're exactly symmetrical, you know, in theory. And then I just traced all of those pieces out onto this giant foam roll that I had. By the way, I got most of the stuff at Michael's, Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Both now carry these giant foam rolls in their cosplay foam section, which they now have, which made me really excited. Um, but anyway, so you can get these and I would highly recommend doing this. Uh, oh, and I tried to make a corset, but it totally didn't work, so back to the hammer. So, yes, so that's where I got almost all my stuff, was either Michael's or Hobby Lobby, so you can find these. They're kind of, sometimes they're in the back, um, and they're not with the other craft foam, so it's a little bit confusing, but that's okay. And also, so now after I cut out some pieces, I realized that I needed to shave the sides so that they fit together in a triangle fashion, as opposed to a... Uh, not triangle a square fashion, which is not what we're going for. Um, and see how these pieces are all curly? So there's a way to fix that. Um, with a heat gun. Yes, this is a very um, macho heat gun that my dad had. But uh, I know you're going to ask, can I use a blow dryer? Well, 
yes and no. So a blow dryer is not usually going to be nearly as hot as one of these heat gun thingies. Um, and honestly, like if you're doing a big project like this, they're like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something. So it's not very expensive to get one. I mean, this is a really modular one, but you don't need to get one this big. So, so what this heat gun does is it will, uh, as you can see, make the pattern pieces flat. Um, but the other really important thing it does is that it kind of seals up all the pores. So when it gets really hot, then the foam pores will kind of melt together a little bit um, and create a flatter surface and all the pores will kind of close up. And so that really helps as well for when you're priming and painting your piece so that the paint and the primer will stick really well. Oh, and my parents can find me. So they called me because I was like in the middle of like the basement and they were like, why would she be down there? Uh, but anyway, here's what I was saying before. So I had to shave the sides to get it to be a tr lay flat triangularly um, instead of to be a square. And uh, it would have been better if I had like some kind of fancy tool to do that, but I just kind of eyeballed it. So, but I guess it worked. And here I'm using hot glue to glue all these pieces together. So it's kind of like the fluke of the hammer. Um, oh, and there's the other drawing that my brother did. You could kind of see, <laughs> um, went a little fast, but yes. So he's an actual like artist. So, you know, it, it went like way better. So I, that's the drawing that I went off of. So according to his drawing, I, there's this kind of piece in the front, uh, it's kind of like a, a weird trapezoid thing. And so I'm marking out that weird trapezoid thing. Um, oh, and here's all the pattern pieces that I made, including the trapezoid thing. Oh, and that's what happens if you accidentally burn your foam uh, with the heat gun. <laughs> um, oh, another good thing, if you don't have a heat gun, then another really good thing to use is the lighter. So if you use a lighter or <laughs> if you're really gutsy, a blowtorch, uh, you can uh, seal up all the pores and it also can really help flatten out or bend it into whatever shape you want. So in this case, I was flattening out the foam, but you can also make the bend the foam if you so desire with heat. Um, so yes, but that's what it will look like if you burn the foam. So don't, don't do that. Um, and also label all your pattern pieces because even though I like labeled mine, okay. And I still almost got them really mixed up and it kind of looks like a Triforce, but it won't look like a Triforce in a minute. Um, oh yes, yeah, see Triforce. <laughs> uh, and so you label them and yeah, so I decided that I was going to stick, see that, see that front piece? That's what I'm making. Um, but there's like no flat surface to just put that on because it's a triangle. <laughs> so I had to make the side pieces to attach, kind of make this like brick thing to attach to the thing. Oh, but see, this is what I realized. So remember how I cut? the flukes like shorter in the very beginning when I was making the pattern because it looked better. Well, it did look better, except I realized when I put the um, thing on the thing, the, the black piece, the front piece, the front piece on the, the front of the hammer, um, that it looked too squatty, um, but I couldn't make that front piece any smaller. So I had to make the fluke parts bigger. So I make shifted this, like these pieces to then glue on the inside. So where you're not gonna see it, um, to make it a little longer so the hammer doesn't look all squatty uh, and they're extremely ugly but nobody's gonna see it so it's okay well I mean I guess you see it but you know well it, it's fine so after I did that then I kind of made that extension and that's also how I ended up gluing the pieces together um, and this hammer just kind of kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> um, so at this point it was much bigger than I previously anticipated, but you know what? Like, go bigger, go home. So now you can kind of probably see better what I'm talking about. So in order to put this on the front, I had to glue my pieces that I traced out um, to that kind of front part. And, oh, by the way, the only difference between the black foam and the white foam is the black foam is a tiny bit thinner, but that's not like because I wanted it to be. That's just because that's what I had because I had some smaller pieces of foam instead of the big foam at all. Um, but anyway, so you can kind of see, see how it's kind of fitting on the front piece there. So I actually did make it a tiny 
bit, it was still a little bit too small. Remember how I said I couldn't make it any smaller? Well, it was still a little bit too small, so it kind of was a tight stretch, but I was able to make it work. Um, so I glued the, the front and the back pieces with the hot glue, and for some parts of this I used hot glue, and for some parts I used contact cement, and they kind of have different applications. Uh, so yes, you can see me really, really struggling here, <laughs> trying to glue these pieces on because they were under a lot of tension because it was just a little bit too small. So here I'm using the hot glue, but, and the hot glue is really great for things that you need a whole lot of, like, um, you want to make sure something is like completely sealed or you don't want to spend forever holding it in place. Uh, the contact cement, which I'm using here, the downside to it is it takes a little bit longer. You have to coat both sides and then wait for it to dry and then you can stick them together and then they will stick together like you're not getting them apart, like ever. Like exactly how you stick them together is how they're going to stick together. Um, but um, that can also be a downside to the contact cement because as you can see like with the flukes, I was able to kind of um, nudge it together to be exactly how I wanted it to be. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the rundown of the two different glues. Okay, but here's where I realized that I'd made a grave mistake. So remember how this was like way bigger than I thought? And um, yeah, remember that stick in the beginning? Yeah, so I was kind of thinking I would just stick the stick kind of in this bottom part here and I was, I'm going to extend this bottom part a little bit too, but I realized that because the hammer was so much bigger than I had anticipated and so much heavier, there was no way that that had enough structure to hold the hammer up. Like it would just break or it would be super wobbly and I don't want a super wobbly hammer. I want something that looks like, you know, like you could in theory wax on with it. So yeah, um, that was a big problem. And spoiler alert, I did fix it, but uh, you're gonna have to wait till the next video for me to uh, fix that. But don't worry, it's at the very beginning. I'm not clickbaiting you, I swear. I figured out a way to add structure into the hammer with what I had, and I think it's really awesome. So yeah, uh, here's a little outtake, but um, thanks for watching. What am I supposed to do? No, you're just supposed to be walking. Oh. Just for like short clips. Okay. <laughs> Wait, don't leave quite yet. Okay, so this is actually my very first video on this channel, and I've got a ton of other videos lined up to release over the next couple of days. Um, so if you like this video, please subscribe. Thanks.